these cappings are in now, great job. Um, just as I was hoping it would be. So as you walk up the stairs here now, you see what you haven't got. Although we are, you'll see as I come to do it, we are going to show a little bit of the back of this newel here. We haven't got it, the newel sort of coming all the way down to sort of accommodate an apron coming into it. So you kind of potentially robbing Pete's to pay Paul a little bit so you get a nice line uh, underneath here where the ceiling meets the, the wall and the sort of stair opening. Um, you know, you don't get it broken with the newel. So, you know, I'm happy with those. Look pretty good up under there. Look pretty good up under there. So that's nice and, uh, you know, nice and fairly sharp. Uh, so um, fitting nicely down over this string here, nice into this corner. Next job is I've got my half newels here. So what we need to do now, get those half newels sort of fitted. I won't fix them because I've got to get the handrails in. Uh, once that half mill's up against that wall there, I can get a measurement and cut my tenon on the end of it. Uh, pretty much the same for this one. Uh, we've got a length of the handrail coming through here. Mice is at 45 degrees and then goes into the, another tenon that goes into that mill post there. So let's get on with those. So I've taken my level there and what I've done is leveled a line from the top of this mill back to this wall here. It so happens that it's the same measurement from the, floor, uh, from the floor down there to the top of that mule, as it is from the floor here to the top of this mule, which means obviously this floor is nice and level, which it should be. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I've got this half mule, just double check that the distance from the top of the mortise to the top of the mule is the same. And this company's really good, I'm no doubt that, but I still double check because you don't wanna make a mistake. And if, if, something was, if someone's done something wrong, now's the time to sort of identify and, and deal with it rather than leave it till later, uh, making sure that the, also that the, uh, dowel hole is on the outside so it matches this uh, newel as well and then what I'm going to do upside down is put that newel down to the floor there and then as you can see there I should just transfer that line across and cut that. What I've also done because we're quite close, oh, sorry I should say I'm going to do the same on this side um, but because we're quite close to this opening for the stairs here what I've done is leveled a line across so that both these two newels uh, finish at the same point because I think if they were slightly out which potentially they could be you know if this if this trimmer was slightly low uh, it would then make this new low which would make uh, this measurement low here so um, I haven't double checked it but I know that we're we're pretty good but in this instance and again you know we do need to rely on the level for many many things but sometimes you can sort of tickle it here and and you know have a bit of tolerance it wouldn't matter if they if this handrail here was running out five mil over that was that 1.5 meters you're not really going to notice it more than you would potentially if both of these newels sort of ended at the same point of this opening here and one was five or ten mil higher than the other so uh, yeah so transfer that mark onto there cut that one level that across there transfer the mark onto this newel and uh, cut that one i've got my half newel in position and what i'm going to do now is run my tape measure from this uh, shoulder of the half newel to this shoulder of the full newel uh, i've got a bit of handrail here that the company have sent they've already done half of the work for me it's got a tenon on the end so i'll just put my tape from that shoulder mark another shoulder and then add on the tenon won't be quite as long as this one because we've got a bit of skullduggery to get this one in here so what i should probably do is fix i'll put this tenon and pre-drill it for the counter bore, uh, pre-drill it for the drawdown, I should say, put it all in loose, and probably put like a bit of a leading edge on this tenon a little bit, and put a corresponding leading edge on the other tenon. So hopefully what I can do is put this uh, handrail onto the half mule there, and then sort of slide the other end, the other tenon into that mortise there, and then just try and sort of slide the whole thing in so that it, you know, I don't have to spread this out too far and I've got enough meat to be able to get my dowel through there. So yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit of sort of trickery, but it saves just cutting, well, you know, a really short stub tenon on the handrail and putting a screw through. So um, that's the plan anyway. So let's, uh, let's get that done and see, see how we go. Right, everything's done, uh, ready with this handrail. I've mocked it all up, I've taken the edges off just off the newel end, look, I've just sort of put a leading edge and you'll see that'll help me sort of slide the thing in. I could be tempted to uh, dowel this onto here so it's not a wobbly when I'm trying to dowel it when it's in position, but having this 
loose in here as well allows the whole gives me just a little bit more sort of triangulation and uh, just a little bit more tolerance to get the whole thing in. So uh, let's get it glued up and then get it all put in. Once we commit to it, we've got to get on. So here we go. Let's go. I hope you can see it. We've got the camera angle. Let's put some glue on here. Some glue on here. Glue fest, isn't it? Let's get a bit in here. Rub it with our finger. Get some here as well. The dowels are already in my pouch, ready to go. Right, okay, here we go. So let's slip that one in there first. See, because I've got that lean edge on that tenon, that helps me stick it halfway in there. And then I'll kind of put that one there. I've got a wire here. Look like another. Plates, but there we go. Look, there we go. That's it. Lovely. I can just see that's just nipping up nice and tight now. Not too tight because I don't want to push that mule over. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Right, uh, what we're going to do now is quickly bash in these dowels. I haven't got anyone to give me a hand, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to kind of. I don't know if you can see that one yet. I'm going to have to put my own weight behind that one and knock that one in. But anyway, let's. This one will be all right because it's got a lot of meat behind it. I did just have to adjust this new, must be slightly out of square with the something. So I just adjusted this as a factory uh, tenon on here, but I just adjusted it to make that joint nice. So let's go. Here we my drifter. Right, that's super duper. There's lots of glue including out everywhere. Right, and then same here. This is going to be a little bit lively because I've got a hold. I mean, I could fix it, but then I think I could end up flexing the fixings. Right, so that's going to come over a bit. Here we go. And the biggest problem is going to be. Uh, here we go. Have to use another limb on this one. Here we go. Beautiful, that's absolutely fantastic. So I'll get that cleaned off, and then there's a couple of screws to put in, put in there, and then I'll show you that. Okay, that's that glue cleared off, so we can have a quick look at that now. Uh, that's gone in there, a treat look, so we've got a, a nice joint in there. Obviously, it's hanging over here, I'll show you that from the other side. Nothing we can do about that. Um, that went in, just scuffled it slightly, but not the end of the world. I've got uh, to, I'm going to put a fixing in there, which I'll put a cap over, and a fixing down at the bottom, which I'll put low enough so it goes behind the spindle base rail. And then obviously this uh, joint in here, quite, I had to chisel this a little bit, as I said, because this was slightly out of square. So that's all cleaned up. Another thing that I do, just double check here, check these, uh, check the handrail is in wind with the uh, floor capping there. And I don't know if you can just, I haven't checked it yet, but you can just see, can you see, as I bring the camera over, you can see how the two should wind in. So we need to check that because obviously if that's out, that'll look absolutely terrible. So just keep an eye on that. Yeah, so so realistically, this is the detail we get that I was talking about. Um, it's the detail that I prefer than the newel going all the way down and breaking this line here. The sort of, I'd say the downside of it, the con is obviously you're gonna see that little bit of the backside of the half newel level. What I've done here is I've just sanded that up and taken the aris off. So, you know, I think that's gotta come down slightly just knock this tiny edge off here, because obviously this, if you look at that end, uh, this should be in the same line as the nosing, but you know, to me, I don't think that's, as I said, I've said it many times, I'm repeating myself now, but I, I think I'd rather see that than I would that newel half will come right down and have some weird detail under here and a half apron, or I don't really know. I suppose the other, other option maybe would be to run this all the way through, but then you're just making, I don't know. Um, I, I like that detail, um, if anyone's got any, uh, any thoughts on that in the comments, any of you pro guys, and tell me what you, what you think about that. I've got to just bring that out a little bit so that's nice and parallel up there. So, yeah, that's one done. Uh, pretty much do the same on this other one. It's not going to be, uh, I'm not going to have to squeeze it in like that one because basically I shall cut this piece uh, with a mitre on the end, cut that bit with a mitre on the end, and then just join the two together on the mitre, maybe pin it or put a, you know, screw in it with a pellet over it. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's looking good. Um, Really cracking on well, really happy. Oh, nice. 
13 millimetres. Lovely. Super. So what we get sent by the company that makes these is this pre-made bit of hand run. I don't really know why they, they send it because they can never know what uh, length this uh, what length this bit of hand run is to the mitre. So I, I've said to them for many years and I've worked for these guys for years, fitting their stairs for them and for contractors. The best thing they could do would be to leave a short piece with the tenon on and then uh, a long piece with the tenon on, that would be much more use. But, so what I've got basically to do here, because the return that I'm putting on this little bit is pretty much only just wider than the thickness, than the width of the handrail itself. So what I'm going to do here is just knock this apart, which I should do very unceremoniously. So I'll just knock that apart. I can now, that can now, you see, that can now go, well, we'll adjust it a little bit, but maybe no, no. That one's just a tiny, that's a bit tight. Anyway, so uh, I can cut a new mitre on there, and then when we look over to that half newel over there, I can cut a tenon on that half newel, and pretty much just lay one over the other, and mark my mitre points, cut my mitres, and then I so say what I'll do is probably put some glue on it. They put some pins in here, which they can do, because you know it's not sort of under any stress, but I may well have to put a... Uh, maybe put a screw or something in here with a pellet in here to hold it. Well, let's do the mitre and see how it, uh, see how it goes. But pretty straightforward this now. that last little bit, I won't go right up to the shoulder and just break that out and clean that tiny butt with the chisel. Right, that's got the bottom of that cut, cut. tied it up with the chisel a little bit and hopefully that should fit straight in that mortise. I'm pretty happy with that, more or less straight off the saw, maybe just a tiny little bit out of there, might just clean out, but yeah, not, not too bad, might give that another little tickle. Right, so, got this small, uh, small section of handrail in and I've got the big section of handrail in the Half new, what I've done, you can just see over here, is I've just put an off cut of handrail down so that it holds everything up so that the handrail that comes on here sits on top of the handrail that comes out of this new, uh, and that way you can get a nice, we can physically mark one across the other. So let's just get that around here, put that into position, and that can just sit on there, that's all at the right level. Uh, we need to sort of decide how far the setback is. Obviously we don't want it so far that it leaves these uh, screws in this capping, so I think we set that. I've got a piece of quite ready here, we'll see it somewhere. I've got a small bit of uh, spindle and base rail here, so we just make sure that that sort of um, is covering the screws there. I think you probably can't, can't quite see right down here. But what I'm going to do is just take a measure, in fact I'll grab you, and show you what I'm doing. So there's a there's a only really one important measurement, and that's this measurement here. This one is obviously dictated by the fact it's it's already in this newel. So yeah, what I'm doing here, look, is I don't want this to be this return to be bigger than it needs to be. So um, what I'm going to do, so we just need to make sure that we cover these holes here. So if I put that base rail sort of there, what I've then got is I'm going to use the measurement, you see I'm going to use the measurement to here, which is where the inside edge of the spindle is, because we can, we can make that relative mark to the, uh, the sort of spindle groove uh, on the handrail. So we said there what we've got, 22 mil. So now what I need to do is uh, 22 mil from the, from the outside face of the spindle groove here, back to the newel, which is pop there. Super. Right, so, as long as that's tight back there, that looks alright. Just going to keep it, I'm just going to keep this 
handrail roughly in wind with a nosing, like I mentioned before, just to make sure that, you know, I, I want to make sure that there's a nice shoulder against this, uh, this newel, so that all is not bad. Yeah, that's, that's winding through quite nicely, so that is the position. I'm just going to check that again. 22 mil, yep, that's, so that's it. So we know that they're the positions at which those mitres are going to cross. So I need to go and get my square because the top section of handrail is slightly wider than the bottom section where the moulding is. So I need to get my square to make sure the points are exactly right rather than marking off the bottom. So I'll just, two seconds. Right, I've got my square, so I'm just going to literally drop my square down and then we know that the square is exactly uh, in the right position. Uh, where the outside edge of the uh, mitre wants to be. So if I just mark that there. What I'm actually going to do here as well, just make these like a millimetre longer than they need to be, purely because I'm cutting these, these are like free cuts on the mitre saw anyway, so they're not difficult to make. So if I make them a millimetre longer, if something's slightly out of square, we've got some adjustment, whereas if you cut them dead on the first time and you need a bit of adjustment, you're then starting to sort of have to try and stretch stuff so um, you know it's someone might want to do it sort of straight off and just hope for the best but if you can cut it a little bit longer like say you've got room for a little bit of adjustment to make that mitre perfect so I've got to do this one down onto there which is exactly there excellent so mitre on there mitre on there bring them up see how they fit Right, I've got my two pieces uh, here, so let's stick, stick one in there. Like I said, these are a couple more long, so we've got some, some to play with if we need be. Stick that in there. Let's have a look here. Roughly in the right position. Yeah, that's not bad. Probably going to want a little bit of tickling here, so maybe just adjust this one a little bit. Double check exactly that's in the right position, but yeah, we're pretty much in the right ballpark. So we'll just tie that one up, fix that together, and then we can get this dialed in and that's that done. I'm just about to join these two mitered bits of handrail together. And what I'm going to do here, just to give this an extra bit of strength, because as you see when I knock this apart, it doesn't take much to knock them apart. And that's because this is quite a tight grain and the wood, it's not quite as porous so the, the glue doesn't get as good a grip as it would as if it was long, in longer grain. So what I'm going to do is just put a, a number 10 biscuit in the middle here and that just gives more glue area and help, help sort of stabilise the joint, in, uh, keep the joint flush as well. What I've done here, because this is a small bit and you know when you're using a cutter like this in your trimmer or your router, you know you try and hold that uh, with your hand, you're going to lose some fingers. So what I've done is just drilled a hole and screwed it down to the floor so that's nice and solid. Obviously this piece is much bigger so I can get a better grip on it. So we need to, you know, don't try and ever work on something small like that with a machine like this or any machine really because you could end up really hurting yourself and you know, you need your little fingers, they're your friends. of juicy 18 volt Makita goodness. So, take two. Lovely, right. Biscuit in there, that'll make the joint lovely and strong.
Nice. Just get that lined up, screw the other end. All those handrails are done now. Uh, obviously, I've just got to tidy this up a bit. I'm going to put a pellet in there when all this wood's gone off. Um, so pretty happy with that. It's got quite a nice mitre through there. All these joints are pretty good, hand cut. Uh, obviously, pellets to go in. That's fixed to the wall. They had to put that slightly off centre um, just to catch that stud up because I forgot, and it's my own fault, I forgot to put a, a stud behind there to take that half newel. I don't normally forget that, but always when you've got newels coming, if you can put a stud in behind for them to fix, you're going to save yourself a lot of aggro. So, yeah, that's all kind of in. Have a look at that, look. All the handrails are in, half newels are in, uh, floor cappings are in. So all I'm gonna do now for the, for the last bit of this phase is put in the, uh, here they are, look, the, the sort of spindle base rails. So this is a fairly simple one, it's just a straight uh, cut each end. And this one will just be a, a tiny little mitered section in the end there. And I'm not gonna do any more uh, uh, in this phase, purely because uh, it's gonna be much easier if the decorator comes along and all of the spindles, he can give them a coat all the way around, at least one or two coats all the way around. And also you can imagine that if I was just put spindles all the way up here, it's gonna make it very difficult for him to coat the backside of the spindle here. And also it's gonna make it awkward to get a nice job of painting that, um, that sort of reveal there. So, uh, you know, it's much easier if that's all done to start with and certainly I mean, obviously someone's going to have to do it one day when they come to redecorate, but I know that the decorators are quite skilled and got all kinds of different brushes and rollers, but in the first instance, uh, you know, there's an opportunity here to make it much easier for the decorator, so it'd be silly not to take that. So let's get these uh, capping uh, spindle base rails put in, and then we can have a clear down, and that's this bit done. So I'm going to call this sort of, it's a halfway between a first fix and a second fix of these stairs. So I'm really happy all of these... Uh, floor cappings are in, they look pretty sweet, I'm happy with it. And like I said, we've got a slight bit of an overhang of that newel there, but I'm not sure what else you can do there other than have this newel come all the way down, which kind of draws your eye to it even more. Really happy with how that's all gone. My spindle base, uh, base rails are in, they're all nice and neat and tight. All my joints are nice and neat and tight. What I've done here is just pinned a bit of timber down to the floor to put a wedge in just to sort of, I haven't tried to sort of pin or anything this, I'm just gonna let the glue go off. So uh, yeah, that's all neat and tidy, got a nice little joint there, everything's looking neat and tidy. Decorator's just gonna have to fill that little bit in there because that's a little bit of a reveal. Caps to go over these, some of these uh, holes, no problem. This is now looking nice, even sort of amount sticking up here because we've got a newel cap to go on here, a newel cap to go on here, so that'll bring that down sort of here. So like I said, we want to be roughly, these newels want to be exactly, sorry, these newels want to be sort of roughly the same relative to this opening here. Uh, all my handrail joints are good. I'm pleased with that one mitre, so just got to mess around, uh, put a pellet in there, maybe just sand that a little bit. Uh, it's all looking pretty good. Uh, these were, that one's all right, I had to tickle that one with the chisel a little bit. That was the, the factory shoulder on that tenon on that handrail. Uh, this one's not bad. So, yeah, all in all, really, really happy with that. So, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. It's coming. Oh yes, um, I did get a couple of comments on uh, one of my earlier videos about this detail and someone said, you know, why do you put this capping in the floor? But I hope you can see now that makes sense that this, this capping goes at floor level to finish into, well, it's not aprons, but this is a sort of plasterboarded reveal in this case. And then this capping, this, uh, this spindle base rail will then take the carpet the big grip and the carpet or floor covering will come into the back of it here. So as you can see, that's the same both sides. So it's just a nice little detail where finishing off and uh, catching the bottom of the spindle. So I think, uh, we turn that around. I think that's, I'm not gonna do any more on this one. I really only came to do the stairs. Sorry, I only really started doing the stairs today because I was actually here to do the kitchen, but the decorator wants to paint all the walls around before I start fitting kitchen units, which makes perfect sense, doesn't it really? Pointless him having to sheet up over what I've done. So I'm only gonna do this, what, what I've done today, um, and all that's left on this set of stairs, if I just turn that around again, all that's left on this set of stairs now is, it really is like the spindles, that's it. So spindles and just, you know, put these pellets in and then stick the uh, newel caps on. As I said earlier, I know I repeat myself, I'm not gonna put the spindles in because it would just make it difficult, unnecessarily difficult for the decorator. So um, I hope you've followed that and what I've done and you know, these are the kind of details. 
all the stairs are different and they're not they're, they're not always like this but as I said you can't really you can't really make this symmetrical because it's not symmetrical the stairs are pushed up to a wall on one side and there's obviously an opening on the other so um, you know I think that that's a nice neat way of doing that I'm, I'm really pleased with it and I hope you've been able to follow you know the bits and bobs my thought process some of the little things I do and you know especially if you're you know you're a trainee carpenter or, or, or even a more seasoned carpenter and it's always good to see how other people do it and again always welcome any comments in the comment section down below uh, any comments you've got on how I do things and how you might do things differently if you're in the trade as always I hope you found the video interesting and thanks for watching